Hey guys, we are the Latter-day Disciples. Our team is dedicated to helping you boldly live the gospel, recognize the signs of the times, and prepare for the return of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We invite you to join us in our mission through our daily and weekly podcast series, connecting with us on social media, and visiting latterdaydisciples.com. We pray you are enlightened and empowered through this podcast episode. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Latter-day Disciples podcast. I'm excited to be joined today by Christina Judd. Christina is a former teacher, child development specialist, and film photographer turned blogger. Currently, she is an author, speaker, crossfitter, and homeschool mom who recently discovered an affinity for classical literature and poetry memorization. Christina is loved for her candor, compassion, and unique ability to explain the complexities of our mortal journey in plain terms. Owning true talent and capacity for listening, no one's story is too difficult to hear, and Christina effortly, effortlessly creates space for everyone to come and see and come and belong. Currently, she works and plays with her husband and three girls in Northern Utah. Christina, thank you so much for joining, joining us today. I am so excited to be here. Thank you. You are so welcome. Well, I'm really excited about the topic that we have picked out today, particularly um, considering the timing of this being the start of a new year, the beginning of 2024, when a lot of people are looking to make changes and that are being more intentional, perhaps more cognizant about time and the turning of time. And so I'm really excited about what you have to share today. Um, but first, can we hear a little bit about your story, just a little bit about you and your journey and where you have come to be on our podcast today? Absolutely. I living the, for most of my life, I was born and raised in the church and um, have an amazing mother who was really Christ centered. So everything she taught was in light of Jesus Christ. He heals you. He saves you. And it was so easy for her to say, like, I'm a sinner and I need Jesus. She would say it all the time. And so it was just not perfection was never the goal in our house, if I could say it that way. Um and so I grew up with that version of God and, and she already knew that we're saved by grace. I don't really, I don't, I don't know how she knew that, but she knew we're saved by grace period. And there's nothing I can do to save or redeem myself. So with that foundation, it was really easy for me to be a member of the church and really easy for me to believe in Jesus Christ. And it was not stressful for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't realize what a gift that was going to be later on when I was doing all the right things, like following all the rules. And I had graduated college. My husband had graduated. We had two daughters and I was doing all the right things. And my mental health and my happiness just tanked hmm. to the lowest of lows. And um, I kept thinking, like, I'm reading my scriptures every day. I'm praying. I'm going to the temple. I am doing everything that God asks of us. So I thought, and it's not working. And it's not, not only did I not get better, I kind of felt like the woman with the issue of blood where she had seen all the physicians and she didn't get, not only did she not get better, she just got worse. And that's what, that's what was happening to me. And so we lived in Seattle at the time and decided we needed to make some really drastic changes. My yeah, I don't, I just can't, I think mental health describes it. I was, I couldn't function anymore. And so we moved to Huntington Beach, California, where it's like, I was like, I want the sunniest place mm -hmm. on earth. Mm -hmm. We moved to Huntington Beach and we had this really beautiful institute teacher who um, just kept saying like, what do you want? God will give it to you. What are your questions? Go ask them. And at the same time, President Nelson, like at that time in my life, I was like, where's my faith and who's God? Because I did all the right things and now it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And he's not hearing me and he's not there. So what's going on? And while we were in Huntington Beach with President Nelson, newly called as the prophet saying, hear him, go get revelation, go have your, go have your questions answered. And this institute teaching teacher saying the same things. It mm -hmm. just, it was like, it was like a rebirth. <laughs> mm -hmm. My, all of the culture that I had experienced was stripped away because the culture didn't work. And mm -hmm. I was literally left asking 
God, how does it work? Mm. How am I healed? How am I changed? How am I saved? What do I do? And right then, President Nelson also said, this this is like the perfect storm, right? Perfect, beautiful storm. President Nelson said, study Jesus Christ in the topical guide. Just go through every verse and underline it. And so I started that study. And not only did I not see the most powerful people in scripture doing more, I saw them doing less. I saw them learn who Jesus Christ is from a place of stillness. Mm -hmm. And I learned faith and repentance and realized from scripture that repentance is nothing like we talk about. Mm -hmm. It's not the five steps of repentance. Mm -hmm. And um, once I had this clear picture of faith and repentance and Jesus Christ, everything changed and um, power just started like flooding my life, power and answers and healing and help. And so that's where we are today. Mm, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And then you took all these things and you created a book out of it, right? I wrote the book. Yeah. Okay. So that's called after what, what's it called? <laughs> Say it again. All, all we can do. All we can do. Right. And that's kind of your compilation of these insights that you gained on faith and repentance and the nature of God. Right. Yep. Okay. That's so awesome. What inspired you to take all these things and turn them into a book? I think it was because it very specifically, it was because it was really hard for me to have children. Mm. I didn't think it would be hard for me to have kids, but it was really hard. And I didn't understand the change that that meant having kids mm. mm -hmm. and how all of your liberty is dissipated Stopped away from you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And everything you have is sucked dry mm -hmm. by these little people who need it. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I learned about the people in scripture who, the most powerful people who exercise their faith unto repentance, mm -hmm. um, I started doing it. And I, so, but I think maybe I should just like give a little background there. So Alma yeah. and Amulek are the ones who teach it. Alma and Amulek mm -hmm. teach faith and repentance so beautifully. And they say like, the son of God is going to come, suffer, bleed and die and be resurrected so that you may exercise faith unto repentance. Mm. And there were a few things that happened. Then they tell you how to do it. Mm. They say, exercise your faith and repentance by crying out over your flocks, crying out over your fields, cry over your houses, cry over your enemies, cry over everything. And I, the Holy Ghost taught me very clearly, like cry over your children, cry over your sadness, cry over your heartache cry over everything you can't do pour your true and honest heart out to god and i began repenting that way and crying out how nephi and mary and elizabeth and isaiah and the brother of jared and mm. enoch it is literally everybody in scripture is crying out their true and honest heart so and they receive power healing and miracles the most powerful people in scripture look like the most obedient they're actually the most repentant. And you have to also, yeah, you have to also bring the brother of Jared, or not the brother of Jared, um, we'll get there, yes. But King Benjamin back into this because his people, when he, the angel comes and teaches him about Jesus. And once they understand who Jesus Christ is and what he did for them, they fall on their knees mm -hmm. and they plead for mercy. And I think that is a sign for us. Like if I understand who Jesus Christ is, then I'm on my knees, yeah. then I'm pleading for mercy. And when they did that immediately, the Holy ghost came and changed their hearts. So this was, this is a very clear pattern, right? Faith, repentance, baptism, receive the Holy ghost. And endure to the end. I don't know when that was added to the, first principles of the gospel and dirt to the end was added sometime later and yeah. it has kind of come to mean culturally like do everything you can so that you can go to the slice until you die yes, yes. <laughs> as long as you die a member of the church <laughs> then you'll be good that's right. that has been what it's come to mean yes yeah but it's really, totally wrong but yes yeah. <laughs> your honesty is beautiful no. um, <laughs> So it's actually faith, repentance, baptism, receive the Holy Ghost. 
and more faith repentance covenants so that you receive the holy ghost and more faith unto repentance mm. to receive the holy ghost because the holy ghost this is the other thing about the holy ghost when we look, you're talking about the nature of god the holy ghost is not just a comforter he doesn't just make me feel good mm. <laughs> the holy ghost has this sacred sacred responsibility of actually changing my heart the purifying and the sanctifying and the getting all the gunk out and it is by our repentance that he does that. Mm. So again, this whole King Benjamin, see your worthlessness, see no, not, not right. see your worthless and fallen state. I'm not worthless. Right. This right. place we are in is worthless. Right. So see your worthless yeah. and fallen state and your weakness and your unworthiness. And that is how you will always retain a remission of sins and always be filled with the love of God. Mm. Oh my goodness. Okay. So many things, so many things that I want to unpack because everything you just said was absolutely brilliant. So this beginning, this process that I'm seeing of there's like, okay, three things and a, and an impact that I feel like really stood out. So the first is understanding God. The next one is crying out, which we could say is that faith, right? That that's that faith in action that, um, that, that spiritual creation where you're engaging your emotion and you're acknowledging where you're at and where you want to be. And that Christ is the only one who can make that happen. And then this repentance. And I want to come back to the result, which is the Holy ghost, but let's talk a little bit about that first point, understanding God. The more that I'm learning, um, especially over the last couple of months, it's really brought to my my personal belief that I did not understand God. And I'm like you, I grew up in the church and we have beautiful doctrine, beautiful truth in the church. Um, but it is not all the truth. And as I have sought more truth about the nature of God, about the nature of Christ. Wow. Like my mind has been continuously blown but tell me what have you found and whether it be through the process of your studies or your experiences or writing this book or, or whatever, what did you have to do to come to understand the true nature of God? It's a great question. I love everything you're saying for me. I also think it is so beautiful that we are part of this restored gospel, that we have truth. We do know truth. And like thank all of those before us who have crossed plains and buried babies and come across mountains to bring us to where we are. They restored a church and that is miraculous. And now it is a gift and it is a blessing that I get to say, I know this gospel is true. I actually like, like to say, I know Jesus Christ is true. Yes. I think um, that's a good distinction. The church, isn't yes. it always true, right? The church right. is very fallible. Yes. <laughs> so, um, it's so beautiful that I get to say, I know what is true, but the next immediate question has to be what else is true? Yes. What more is beautiful. true? Mm. And I think that is where we don't just get narrow-minded. No, this mm -hmm. is true. And anybody yes. who's out here is not in here. Is wrong, yes. This is wrong, or they're astray, mm -hmm. or they're not following the prophet, or mm -hmm. we put a bunch of labels on those people who are thinking, wait, what else is true? Right. Well, that's actually a really brilliant question. Right. Oh, that's so good. I love that. Yeah, truth is so expansive. Um, I think what you'll find, and this is the, this is part of the nature of God, right? Is that God is always progressing. God is always evolving. They are stagnancy is hell, right? Or, or decreation yeah. is hell. Um, God, by virtue of being God slash goddess, I will add that gods, gods, and gods. Yeah. Um, this is another layer of truth, right? Like we have all this beautiful truth about our heavenly father. And one of the layers that we can add as we start to add the feminine, we start to add heavenly mother and we start to see, and it, it explodes, right? It just keeps growing. But, um, yeah, truth is always evolving. And I think that you make a really great point that we tend to think that right here, we have all the truth and anyone who's outside of this tradition has less truth or just not true. Um, and I think that's a really unfortunate and wrong way to look at things. 
maybe wrong is a hard word. Um, I think that that will create challenges for you. A limiting way to look a at limiting it. way to you look just at it. limit you. yourself, and you right. limit what else you can know and do. Right. And become. right, right. And as the Lord has led me, He'll lead you. That's one of the coolest things too, is that He'll show you. He'll take you to these other cultures, and to these other groups of people, and to these other faith traditions, and He'll say, "Look at this. Look at what they have. This is true." And maybe it's a true that you haven't heard before. And that and teaches not, us the nature of God too. Yeah. I'm coming to realize too. It's not a lesser true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? No, it's it equally is. true. Yeah. In fact, it, it informs true. our truth. Like we yes. take that and then we look at our truth and we're like, oh my gosh, that makes this so much more true. Um, for example, what we're talking about right now. Um, this expands and applies the truth that God is not a respecter of persons. We think that everyone needs to come here to find truth, but that's not true. He, they have given threads of truth to everyone, everywhere. And we have something to learn from everyone, everywhere. And that is because God is not a respecter of persons. They love all of their children with a universal galactic unending love and they have given us all these different threads and i do believe that no matter who you are you can be born in the himalayas and never hear about jesus christ but you have threads of truth and if you pull those threads of truth eventually you will find god and so it anyway I'm so, really excited about this. I really, really love what you're saying. <laughs> I think I think some people would think I were like apostate for saying this, but I I actually believe that some people leave the church to find more truth. There's so much culture and it gets really, really heavy. And once they leave and that is lifted, then will they eventually come back to Jesus Christ? Yeah, I believe so. But they don't necessarily need to come back to this culture and tradition of an organization that they once knew. Like Mm. it's better for them to expand and grow out of the false false traditions of our fathers right? into light and truth and find God. I think you're so, you're so on point with that. And and to make it really clear, we are not suggesting that anyone leave. (laughs) Okay. In, In case that needs to be said, um, you might find yourself confronted when you start this exploration. Um, it might be tempting to you to say, oh, I want to go find truth over here. Like I'm kind of done with the truth here <laughs> in the church and I want to go over here. And and what I would suggest to you is that we need to hold to the threads of truth we've been given in this gospel because these are the threads that you and I have been blessed with. And that is so precious. So don't abandon it. Go wherever the spirit guides you to learn more and add more threads with the knowledge that all of this truth is going to be circumscribed into one beautiful whole. And you don't have to abandon a piece of it in order to go seek more, no matter what our culture tells you. (laughs) Because our culture will tell you the opposite. Yes, that is so good. And I, Mm. I think we can jump right to the why, like, so the how is faith and repentance. And let's go to the why really fast. And we can hop around from there. But the why is power. So Mm. the, the reason to stay is clarity of mind and wisdom and Mm. joy beyond any joy you have ever experienced. And, and again, this is from doing less, like I'm going to say you don't have to do more. You can find Jesus Christ and rest in stillness, which is repentance, that true and honest heart and conversing with him. And oh my gosh, my mind's going a million places. Let's just do, um, let's, can I go to first Nephi? Like, let's do it. It's, it might be second Nephi. Nope. First Nephi 17. So Nephi is talking about Moses and the children of Israel. Mm. And he's talking about how they were bit by the flying serpents yes this is jesus christ to me this is god so they're bit by flying flying serpents and he prepared a way that they might be healed Mm. and the labor which they had to perform was to look then alma and amulek also describe this those who looked were healed and lived Mm. so jesus christ says that he says look at me in every thought doubt not fear not Mm -hmm. that's repentance that's it 
look in every thought. And I used to read that scripture and think, look in every good, happy, righteous thought, mm. you know, like mm-hmm. look at all the thoughts. No, look okay. in him. every thought. It doesn't matter how bad, immoral, addicted, like lustful, look mm. at Jesus Christ and tell him all about it. And mm. he will send the Holy Ghost and he will change and purify your heart. Just like the um, King Benjamin and his people mm so that they had no more disposition to do evil and they did did good continually. So this faith, repentance, Holy ghost brings this change of heart. I don't change myself. Mm -hmm. I don't heal myself. I don't perfect myself. Jesus Christ does it for me. And we, in our culture, think we need to do more Mm -hmm. to be more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he says the opposite, like be still and know that I'm God. Look at me in every thought. I will heal you. But with that mm. underway, now I don't even remember where we were going after that power. Well, can I add to that? And maybe, yes. maybe we'll, maybe it'll come back. But um, I, I love that so much. And I, and this is a universal truth. I want to make that really clear. Um, I think that we, again, looking at our faith tradition, we have a beautiful, incredible blessing in that we have Jesus Christ all over. Right. And so it becomes easier for us to think of him and look at him because he is woven into the fabric of our, our doctrine and our church practices and the symbolism that we see in the temple and in church and all of these different places. But that being said, if someone who never knew Christ heard his name and called out to him, that person would experience the same or more healing than we would. It has nothing to do with our status before God. It has nothing to do with how much of a sinner you are. And we see this in the book of Mormon, but we don't really believe it. I don't think, because as you said, we're still trying to do, we're still caught in this masculine energy of I've got to do, 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 do. And we haven't yet recaptured the feminine energy of, I just need to be. And right now I'm going to be a mess. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to cry. We do need to learn. This is something we need to reconnect with is just our ability to be present and to be exactly where we are. And let's not pretend to be anywhere else. And then, and go to the Lord and see what he does with you right then. It's total surrender. Yes. Complete surrender. And it, it is yes. really being able to say, I am nothing mm-hmm. as to my strength. I am weak. Like, right. I am less than the dust of the earth. Yeah. Dust obeys better than me. Mm-hmm. Can Mormons say that out loud? <laughs> like, right. The, the waves and the wind and the dirt mm. obeys God more than mm. I obey him. Mm-hmm. And can I recognize that and surrender myself and say, heal my heart to do what you want me to do, mm. to be who you want me to be. So good. And that is, and I want to emphasize too, what you said earlier about how that is our state, right? Like that's where we happen to be by virtue of the fact that we chose to come to this world and perform a work and take on this flesh. And our flesh is a monster. (laughs) Literally it's an enemy to God. And there is no good, no amount of good I can do that makes me different. That makes me any less fallen. Right. No amount of good. It has to be him. Yes, it has to be him. But but he understands that better than we do. Because again, this is our state and our condition right now. But it's not a reflection of who we truly are. Like who we truly are is that we are the race of the gods. We are made from the same stuff. We are as eternal as they are. And yes, we descended right now. We're in a descent phase where we're on this earth and we're experiencing all these things and we're trying to exalt this fallen creation, this chaotic matter. We descended to do that. That was the work. We said, we're going to go down to this chaos and we're going to organize it into our bodies. And I'm going to take my body and I'm going to submit to Christ and Christ is going to sanctify me. And I'm going to exalt this chaos. That was our, that was our work. And that is the work of God's. And the thing is, is that Christ sees us that way still. God loves us so perfectly because they see that we are them and that they cannot hate a part of themselves. They cannot even be 
honestly, I, okay. Another per, perhaps apostate thought. I'd love to hear your impact on this, but I am beginning to wonder if God even ever really gets disappointed in us and not just because they're like, well, I knew you were going to do that. So it's fine. Like, I don't, I don't think it's that. I think it's that they love us because we are a part of them and they recognize that we have agency and they are totally okay with us having agency. They're, scared of us. they're not scared of our mortal journey. They're not, not enough for it. They are enough for all of this. Mm. Yes, this is the process. Mm. So I used to think that we, in the pre-mortal world, we had it all figured out. Like we had learned it all. And then we came to earth and we were supposed to like do it, you know? Mm. And now I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. We, mm-hmm. we were like, like, like Eve in the Garden of Eden. Like I could like pick flowers and look at the pretty fish. (laughs) That was the extent of my creation then, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe learn a little bit, but coming to earth is the process of the growth. Mm -hmm. So there's the scripture. Everything you're saying is reminding me of Alma 33, 16. And Zenus, oh, Zenex said, thou art angry, O Lord, with this people, because they will not understand thy mercies which thou hast bestowed upon them because of thy son. I don't think he's Mm. ever mad at us or disappointed in us or thinks like, why didn't you do that? You know this already. Mm -hmm. You should have figured this out by now. Mm -mm. I think he is only frustrated when he's like, I am so merciful. Just look at me and every thought. (laughs) I love that war. And the other thought, the other thought that I've had recently is that God's wrath, God's anger is informed by the fact that God is love and that they love all of us. They love me. They love the most ascended beings. They love the least descended beings the same. And to watch us all hurt and to watch us all refuse to heal ourselves and refuse to heal each other. And instead we perpetuate generation after generation, this hurt. And so they're angry. Why they're angry? Because they are love And we refuse to be love. So that reminds me of Doctrine and Covenant 19, where God's like, repent. Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. is like, repent. If you don't repent, you have to suffer. Repent. And Mm -hmm. it sounds like he's mad. And it sounds like he's yelling. He's pleading with us. I think he is just begging. I've done it all. I did everything. Just Mm -hmm. look at me and get honest. I will Mm -hmm. fix it. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and look at me and, and uh, period. Yes. Right. (laughs) Like we, we always were like, look at you. Okay. So I've got to look at you by reading my scriptures and saying my prayers and I've got to go to church and I've got to go to the temple, but I'm so, so busy. And I need to stop yelling at my kids because that's not looking at you and all of, and we add all of these things, you guys, it's not, it's, it's so much simpler it's so much simpler than we make it like the, the whole five steps of repentance thing. Let's talk, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, where did that originate? Do you know where that originated from? No. Okay. Me neither, but I'm going to take a guess. (laughs) (laughs) And my guess is that some 70 in the seventies said, here are five things we can do. And I'm going to, they're, they all start with R and they're all going to be really convenient. And we're going to call that repentance. And, and I think there's a lot of wisdom. Okay. Like I'm not disparaging that and saying there's no worth there. That's not what I'm saying, but I am saying that this is a precept of men Then it becomes- that I think we've gotten too focused on. Yes. 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 So tell me what is it to scripturally repent? Um, it's on the 34. You're so good. Yeah. You're a scriptorian. I love it. I love the scriptures have saved my life. And I feel like they saved my girls' lives because Mm. now I get to expound scripture to my children and lighten loads. Mm. This is the Jesus you get to love. This is the God who loves you. Mm. He's carrying you home. Okay. Well, yes. I'm just going to jump there right now. Nephi says he hath redeemed my soul from hell. We're already redeemed. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do anything to earn work or obey my way to the celestial kingdom. He already did that. And that's all in Doctrine and Covenants 45. So now what is my labor? Um, Let's go to Alma 33 because, and then we're going to get to what the work is. Uh, This is the work. 
Alma says, he was spoken of by Moses. A type was raised up in the serpent, or a, a type was raised up in the wilderness that whoever would look might live. So he raised the serpent, which was a symbol of Christ, mm -hmm. and many did look and live. But few understood the meaning of those things, and this because of the hardness of their hearts. Mm -hmm. Some people won't want to look and won't want to get honest, and they won't be healed because of it. But healing is not dependent on what we do. Healing is dependent on our looking. Mm -hmm. And so he says, um, there were many who were so hardened that they would not look. The reason they would not look is because they did not believe that it would heal them. And then Alma goes on to say, oh, my brethren and sisters, if ye could be healed by merely casting about your eyes that ye might be healed, would ye not be healed quickly? If you knew that all you had to do was look, would you look and be healed? And he's like, or would you rather harden your hearts in unbelief and cast up, cast not about your eyes? And then he goes on to say, the son of God atoned for you. Like, if you look, you'll be healed. Mm -hmm. And then Alma and Amulek, these are like my favorite missionaries in the entire world. They are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they, in Alma 34, they talk all about Jesus and they say, the son of God is going to bring salvation to everyone who will believe. Mm. That's how simple it is. Mm -hmm. Do I believe? Then I look. Mm -hmm. And he says, so that men can have faith unto repentance and mercy will satisfy justice to those who have faith unto repentance. Mm. And now may God grant unto you that ye may begin to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye begin to call upon his holy name that he would have mercy upon you. Mm. That's the work. So it beautiful. It is repentance. And we need to get to the power. But then they go on and they say, cry for mercy. Humble yourselves and continue in prayer. Cry over your fields and your flocks. Cry in your houses, over your household. Morning, midday, evening. Cry against the power of your enemies. Cry over the crops of your fields. So I exercise my faith unto repentance by crying out for every single mm. thing. Mm. All day long and that's what I started doing mm. when I every time my girls would touch me this was years ago they would touch me and my skin would crawl and I would think heavenly father I hate this they're touching me I can't breathe <laughs> I can't think and then like I'd be like ah like they're breathing my air I'm breathing there <laughs> <laughs> and it was all day mm. and, or mm. or somebody did this or they said that or this person this it was all day long mm -hmm. crying out as he said Mm -hmm. looking at him in every thought mm -hmm. and my heart started changing my girls would come up there's a story I tell in the book of like my husband took my younger daughter to go fishing and my older daughter was like mom will you go on the swing with me and normally my heart would have been like I don't want to go on the swing <laughs> like I'm mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. and but that time this I had been repenting repenting crying it out pouring it out being honest with God and right then my heart was like, yes, I want to go on the swing with you. And in my mind, I was like, it worked. It totally worked. I didn't change myself. I didn't practice. I didn't work really hard on my weaknesses. It was, I didn't do anything. I repented. I looked in every thought and he changed me. And we swing, we swang, swang, sw swung. All of it. <laughs> swung and swung and swung. <laughs> and I like just... It, it was, it was a life-changing moment for me that told me do more repentance, repent more because it works. And mm. then, um, I started as I was, I was still doing that Jesus Christ topical guide study. So I'm doing that whole study, mm. the whole time mm -hmm. this is going on and I'm going to just open up to the page where I have the most powerful people because, um, can I talk about them for a minute? Do you mind yes, if I like do. share? Okay. So these are the people who look again, like the most obedient and they are the most focused on Jesus Christ. They have their, like president Nelson said, rivet your focus on him. Don't mm -hmm. ever take it off. Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth expresses her unworthiness when Mary pregnant with Jesus comes to her. She's mm -hmm. like, when says this to me? Like who, that the mother of my Lord should come to me, mm -hmm. recognizing her unworthiness. Mm -hmm. Mary, when the Mar when Mary 
When the angel appeared to Mary to tell her what was going to happen, she says, let it be according to thy word. Like I give up my way. I give up trying to do it how I want to do it. Let God do it his way. And then she says, when she goes to see Elizabeth, Mary says, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things and holy is his name. So she, like, like King Benjamin says, she recognizes the greatness of God and her mm. own and unworthiness. And this is the mother of Jesus Christ, you know? John the Baptist, the Savior comes to him and he says, there cometh one, I love this so much. I get like so choked up when I read this. There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Daniel, I'm not even going to read it. Like Daniel, everyone can go find it. Go find the people in scripture and how they repent. Daniel, mm -hmm. Isaiah, Isaiah's in the temple when Jesus Christ appears to him. And mm -hmm. Isaiah, the very first words out of Isaiah's mouth, when he sees Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. I jump back. Isaiah is the most quoted prophet in scripture. And Jesus Christ quotes Isaiah more than he quotes anyone else. Including himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe and not that, but yeah. very much, yes. <laughs> and then when Isaiah is standing before Jesus Christ, he says, woe is unto me. For I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. This is my weakness and unworthiness and my sin. Here it is. Mm -hmm. And Joseph Smith, the brother of Jared, um, Nephi, Paul, Enoch, Moses, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. They know God is so merciful and so good and so kind and mm -hmm. so gentle mm -hmm. that they can look at him in every thought and tell all. And mm -hmm. because they do that, they receive the Holy ghost and are healed. They're Shame. so real. They're so real. And they're so honest. Mm -hmm. They're not pretending that they're good people because they do X, Y, and Z. And they're not trying to make themselves good people. They're not trying right. to be as obedient as they can to be as good and righteous as they can. Right. Yeah. Can I just say that I love, I love that your first two examples were women. And a couple of thoughts that I had about that is that I do believe and this goes both, this goes for men too, but I want to highlight it for women because I think women have this great propensity to see our state. Um, maybe it's motherhood <laughs> because, oh my gosh, motherhood is the hardest thing in the whole wide world. Um, that was a broad generalization, but honestly, I'd put some money on it. If you did a study, I think it's the hardest thing in the world. And so maybe it's that, that it exposes our weakness in these ways. And it's against these children who are just children. And so our weakness, we can never, like, it's so hard to justify your weakness when you're looking at your little three-year-old and you're like, well, you don't know anything and you're as innocent and you're really sweet. And like, this is all me, right? Like it is my weakness. But what I think is so important is that women need to learn how to delineate between this is the weakness of my estate, as Mary said, this is my state right now versus this is my identity. And the problem is, is that women too often take our flesh and we own it and we say, this is who I am. I suck. I suck all the time and I'm going to be horribly depressed and I'm going to have insane anxiety and I'm going to medicate and I'm going to do all of these things to try to stop feeling because it hurts so bad to be in this body. And this is who I am. We have to learn that this is where we are right now. It is not who we are. And God sees that. And that's why God loves us way better than we love ourselves because they know that we are part of God. And we have to learn that we have to learn that that is the first step to taking back that power and saying my estate right now is so lowly. God, take me and change me. Um, and then, and then when we do that, we're no longer stooping in fear before a God who we're afraid is so disappointed with us because we hate ourselves and there's no way that they can love us. We can then come boldly to the throne of yes. grace and know that we are worthy of that grace and love. Yes. yes. And come healing. Goodness. Come boldly. Healing. And yes. And I want to, I want to highlight that too. The more that I learn, the more that I understand repentance is just healing. Yeah. 
And Christ says that he says, won't you come unto me? I would gather you as a hen gathers her chicks. Won't you come unto me and repent so that I can heal you? That's what repentance actually is. And too many of us are carrying all our baggage (laughs) and we're carrying all this iniquity that's not even ours, right? Like I got this genetic predisposition to eat my feelings and it came from my great, 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 great grandma. And I'm just going with it because that's who I am. That's my flesh, right? Instead of saying, okay, I inherited this, but I don't have to stay this way. And oh, Jesus, heal me. Change me. Take this away from me. I don't want to indulge it anymore. I want you to to give me that gift of the Holy Ghost. I'll give you my heart. You give me that and change me, sanctify me, purify me. And it is, it is just that simple. So it's really amazing. Repentance does these two things. Repentance brings our weakness to the surface and we see more of it Mm -hmm. and we can't freak out and not want to see it. We have to then get it out. Are we like, Jesus is coming. (laughs) Our weakness wants out, right? Like he wants us ready for him. We want to be ready for him. And so every time weakness rises to the surface, we can't say, be good, be good, be good. I know. Shut it down. Shut it down. Hide it. Yes. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. Pour it out. Get it out. He will take it. And the trick with repentance is once you repent and you start seeing your weakness, you have to keep repenting. Yes. Keep getting it out. Keep letting it go. It's like a cleanse. It's like a detox. Our physical bodies are such a good, they're such a good type for what we need to be doing with our spirits. Right. And like when you're detoxifying your body, uh, which we all should be doing way more often, (laughs) especially now that it's the new year and we've all eaten crap for the past two months. Um, when you're detoxifying your body, you're changing what you put in it. And you're using things to draw toxins out of it. You're drinking a ton of water. You might even be using some herbal remedies. You might be using betonite clay, some natural things, the things from mother earth, right? That she gave us to get this crap out of us. We don't just leave it there because if you leave it there, that's when down the road, however long you're going to get sick. And then your healing is going to be much more complicated, right? And I think that's a really beautiful pattern beautiful pattern for all of I think it's so good when things go wrong we're scared mm-hmm. uh, we're we have again we know truth and sometimes mm-hmm. we know too much truth like we know <laughs> where we're going we know what the end is supposed to look like and what it's going to look like and then right now when it doesn't look like that we get a little freaked out like oh great now the end won't look like that anymore right. but Jesus Christ did everything the right way he did everything perfectly and his life still got harder and got mm. worse. And it life has to do that yeah. so that we can be purified and sanctified, so that we can see our right. role of weakness and just keep going. Like the right. Savior, I believe the Savior also repented. He had no need of forgiveness, mm. but he also repented because repentance is not just for sin. Right. So when he's in the garden of Gethsemane, pouring out his true and honest heart, I thought I could do it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be the savior, but Mm. take it away. It's too hard and it hurts too much and it's too heavy. Mm. And that's where we get sometimes in this place Mm. of it's too much. I can't do it. I'm I'm, I'm out Mm. and just keep going. Just Mm. keep pouring it out. Just keep letting him know how you feel and what's going on. Be as honest as you can. It is working. This Mm. is the process of healing. This is the process of refinement. The 4,000 degree oven is the refining power, is the purifying. So Mm -hmm. mortality is working and Jesus is working. Mm. It's all working. Mm. And we're already redeemed. Like we're not trying to earn redemption. We're already redeemed. He is preparing us for home. Yeah. This is the work of being right. changed for home. Right. You have to die before you can be reborn. And you will die a million deaths a day. Yes. And you will repent. Or we hope to. We should hope to. We want yeah. we should not be clinging to whatever survival tactics we feel like we have to be engaging to get through our daily lives. We should be, as you said, loving that repentance, loving that turning back, seeing our weaknesses. Um 
exposing our spiritual ailments so that we can turn them over to the Lord and let him heal us. So good. This is why Paul says, like, great, I'm going to glory in my infirmities. If Mm. this is what it is, then I am going to glory in my infirmities that the, what does he say? That the power of Christ may rest upon me, that the something Mm. of Christ may rest upon Mm. me. Like, Mm. I, I, I get it. He, Paul is saying, I get it. I know who you are and I know who I am and I'm going to repent my way through the rest. Mm. So can we talk power? More power. (laughs) Sorry to hijack your podcast. No, you're good. I love it. Um, I just want to read a couple of scriptures that are pure power scriptures, because when you exercise your faith unto repentance and you have covenanted, bound yourself to Jesus Christ, he then is healing and changing your heart. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens. This is crazy good. Then shall they be above all families because all things are subject unto them. Then shall they be gods because they have all power and the angels are subject unto them. So what makes me a God? Power, receiving all power, which is called the priesthood, right? Receiving priesthood power and a fullness of that power makes my husband and I gods. And so this is the point of repentance and receiving the Holy Ghost, because as the Holy Ghost changes our hearts, sanctifies and purifies us, he increases our capacity for priesthood power. We receive more power. And every time that happens, we are growing more into godhood. Mm. And this is the beauty. The brother of Jared did this so well. He got so low. I know I don't deserve this blessing. I know I don't deserve this miracle. I know we have not been calling upon thee. In thy mercy, I know I am wicked continually and evil continually. But in thy mercy, will thou touch these stones so we can Mm. have light on our journey? Mm. I don't deserve this and I didn't do anything to earn it in your goodness and love and mercy. Can you touch these stones so that we can carry on our journey? Mm. This is power. That's repentance. So the brother of Jared repented, got so low that he parted the veil between heaven and earth. This is the gift. When you're talking about those threads of truth and don't go anywhere, stay here for these threads of truth. It is for this because you will receive so much power. You will part the veil between heaven and earth and you will see miracles and eventually Jesus Christ. And Mm. this is the beauty of repentance. Amen. See, so Enoch goes out preaching repentance. God's like, go preach repentance. And he's like, no, not me. And he's like, no, go preach repentance. And he's like, oh, Which is such a repentant thing for him to say. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, go preach repentance. But I can't because I'm repenting right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't made for this. I know. Exactly. You're like, okay, this is why you can preach repentance. You know how to do it. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> it's exactly true. Hmm. Um... I lost the, oh, here we go. If ye are purified and cleansed from all sin, ye shall ask whatsoever you will in the name of Jesus and it shall be done. Mm -hmm. But know this, it shall be given you what you shall ask. This is the beauty of repentance. Again, increasing in the Holy, receiving the Holy Ghost, increasing in power so that when I speak, it is done. Hmm. We ob- we obtain a hope. Our faith becometh un- unshaken in so much that we truly can command in the name of Jesus and the very trees obey us or the mountains or the waves of the sea. Nevertheless, the Lord God showeth us our weakness that we may know that it is by his grace that we have the power to do these things. Hmm. Um, the kingdom is given to you of the father and power to overcome all things. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, asking all things in his name, and whatsoever ye shall ask, it shall be given you. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading a couple of the scriptures, but that's the end. Mm -hmm. Faith, repentance, covenants, Holy Ghost is increase in priesthood power and becoming a God. And I don't have to wait till I'm dead to do it. I get to receive that power now. Yes. In fact, that is is the straight and narrow path. Yes. That is that is redemption. Redemption is returning to the presence of God while in the flesh because it means you've done what you came here to do. You came here, you inherited this flesh, you obeyed. What laws were they obeying? I love how you pointed out um, the brother of Jared. What was he doing? He perfectly in that moment obeyed the law of justice and the law of mercy. 
in a way that only Jesus Christ can allow us to do. So what was he doing? Well, he received a blessing that was predicated on law. He was obedient to that law by acknowledging his weakness and turning it over to the Lord. Oh my gosh, you guys, does that not change everything? Did your spiritual to-do list just get blown up? Like that is insane how profound that is. Um, and so we go, we, we go through this process. We, we are baptized with fire. We receive the Holy ghost. The Holy ghost moves us forward. We're continually holding to the rod, which is that he's telling you what to do, right? That scripture that you just read, whatever you ask, you're going to be given. Why? Because I'm going to tell you what to ask for. That's what clinging to the iron rod is. And then eventually you fall down at the tree. You part the veil. You're in the presence of the Lord. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. It's so beautiful. It's so, so good. Oh, well, I don't even know where to go from there. It doesn't get better than that. What do you think? What are your last thoughts? Give us the last thoughts. Cause there is so much power in what you're teaching right now. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like the law of surrender. Okay. Yes. This is really good. If we want to, cause I know people are like, wait, what about obedience? What about commandments? The, one of the most glorious scriptures is Jesus Christ saying, I am the law. So mm-hmm. if I want to focus on law, then I rivet my focus on him and I don't move. Every good and bad thing that comes through my body gets sent to him. He's already mm-hmm. taken it. He's already overcome it. And then he sends the Holy Ghost to give me power to win. Yes. So I um, I think that the milk of the gospel are the commandments. And we grow up needing, we grow up on milk mm-hmm. and we need these commandments and kind of rules and regulations, but then we mature and grow out of these, this delineation of rules and regulations and grow into, um, Godhood, which is looking at Jesus Christ in every thought we grow into the principle of repentance and because he is the law. I can look at him in every thought and the the labor that I am to perform is to look and it is enough to be healed and changed and brought home. Yes. So beautiful. I love that. And not waiting, like not waiting to look at him until I f- I'm on my last nerve and I, I literally can't do it anymore. Like, I, th- I think that we tend to do that too, right? We're like, I'm going to give my best effort. And then when I've totally lost my crap, that's when I'll turn to Jesus. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, I'll do 1%. He did 99%, but I need to do 1%. And that's so false. He did an infinite amount. He paid an infinite price. I can't even do 0.000001%. He did more than 100%. He did an infinite amount to get me home. So I literally just need to see my worthless and fallen state and his goodness and mercy and glory. And it is enough for him to bring me home. Amen. Just look, just look at the serpent and live. Look in your mind, look in your heart all day long. Use your faculties to look to him, literally create him beside you, talking to you, holding you, create God, create heavenly father and heavenly mother coming to you and you kneeling and weeping and Heavenly Mother is playing with your hair and Heavenly Father is holding your hand and they're just listening to you and they just love you. And it doesn't matter what you did or didn't do because their son paid the whole price. So give it to them, let it go, be healed, go home. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this beautiful, incredible wisdom. I'm totally putting your book on my birthday list. (laughs) I have to read it because you have shared such profound and beautiful insights today. Thank you so much. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you, Megan. Are you just reading the scriptures or have you learned to search them? If you haven't switched to using scripture notes, you haven't discovered the power of a tool designed for searching the scriptures. This incredible tool allows you to pull together search results from the standard works, apocryphal texts, and freedom documents into a collection you can study from. Digging deeper with instant references to Blue Letter Bible, the LDS Citation Index, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and more. You can even import your gospel library notes as well. 
Sign up now for a free trial at scripturenotes.com.